Thank you. Wonderful. Awesome. All right. So good afternoon, and thank you, everyone, for coming to, to, to today's Lunch and Learn on the Castega Spiritualist Camp. Um, I would like to welcome everyone joining us here in person, as well as everyone in our webinar as well. Um, for those joining us online and here, I will have a um, Q&A after the program. Um, anyone that's joining online, you can put questions in the chat, and Katie will relay those to me. Um, so, just to introduce the um, Lunch and Learn today, everyone can hear me? Apparently. Yeah, okay. Sorry. So, to introduce the Lunch and Learn, I've been intrigued by Casadega for a long time. When you hear Casadega, you might initially think of ghosts, witches, the paranormal, and all things spooky. In fact, that might be why you are here today. I remember when I first heard about Castadega years ago, uh, that was also what I associated it with. But as I dug into the history, uh, I found that that is not what it seems to be. So known as the psychic capital of the world, the Castadega Spiritualist Camp is located in Volusia County, Florida, roughly eight miles southeast of DeLand. It is called the psychic capital of the world because of the number of psychics and mediums that live there. However, the camp itself instead prefers the tagline, uh, the oldest continuously active religious community in the southeastern United States, because that's what the Casadega camp is. It's a religious community. Their religion is called spiritualism, which believes that death is not the end, and the living can communicate with the dead. So, Casadega is commonly associated with things beyond um, being a, a religious community, such as witchcraft, the occult, the devil, etc., in sort of a similar way to that of Salem, Massachusetts. Because if you think about it, Salem is a city famously represented as being involved with witchcraft, so much so that the city has built an entire tourism industry on the reputation of the Salem Witch Trials, which we now know was a massive misunderstanding, which resulted in 20 innocent people being killed. Now, Casadega isn't known for any type of scandal on par with the Salem Witch Trials. However, it is similarly misunderstood and misrepresented through a lens of false dark tourism, which is projected onto it. So this page is um, from the 1866 book, Harper's Pictorial, Pictorial History of the Cause of the Great Rebellion, which describes the suspected causes of the Civil War. This page in particular accuses spiritualism as being witchcraft for its communication with the dead and suggests that the communication is the work of the devil. So this is where we start to see some of that misrepresentation right off the bat, essentially. So why is Casadega so misunderstood and so commonly misrepresented? To better understand the camp of Casadega, we need to understand the religion of spiritualism and its origins. So I'm going to go back before the founding of Casadega and discuss the origins of spiritualism. That way we can gain a solid foundation and understanding, and then we will discuss the history of the camp and how it has grown into what it is today. Um, for context, this picture is from 1889. Um, it shows a spirit um, kind of coming into the living realm. Um, this type of photo is known as spirit photography and was very common for the time. It was later found to be created using the method of double exposure. So what is spiritualism? Spiritualism is a religious movement originating in the early 19th century, which believes that a, spirit, a person's spirit in, and their awareness continues after death. They um, can also remain in contact with the living. Spiritualists communicate with the dead through mediumship, the practice of receiving messages through the dead, or from the dead through various phenomena such as uh, clairvoyance, which is seeing through the mind's eye, clairaudience, hearing, clairsentience, feeling, physical manifestations, such as objects moving on their own, etc. 
Through these phenomena, meetings, mediums act as messengers between the living and the spirit worlds. These are the Declaration of Principles, which spiritualists of America have adopted, and these can also be found on the Casadega website. Uh, specifically drawing attention to number four and five, these show the expressed belief in the continuation of awareness after death and the belief in the communica communication uh, with the dead. Also, number six um, is the belief in the golden rule, which is prevalent across many uh, religions. Um, so now that we know a little bit about what spiritualism is, let's talk about the origins of spiritualism. So this is Andrew Jackson Davis. He was a spiritualist from Blooming Grove, New York. He worked as a healer in Poughkeepsie. Uh, he was influenced by Emanuel Swedenborg, an 18th century Swedish scientist turned mystic who wrote about the afterlife and the spirit, uh, the spirit realm. Davis was also influenced by Franz Mesmer, an 18th century German physician who is considered the father of mesmerism or modern day hypnotism. And yes, he is where we get the word mesmerized. Sorry. Uh, in 1847, Davis published The Principles of Nature, Her Divine Revelations, and A Voice to Mankind, in which he discussed accessing the spirit world through trances and clairvoyant visions in order to communicate with the dead and gain guidance from spirits. He went on to publish about 30 other works relating to spiritualism. He is considered the father of modern spiritualism by spiritualists. And I say by spiritualists because he's not typically where people start when looking into the origins of spiritualism. Instead, people often look instead to the Fox sisters. So these are the Fox sisters. There's Margareta or Maggie, Catherine, also known as Kate, and Leah. So the Fox sisters were daughters of a poor farmer in Hydesville, New York, which was a small hamlet of Arcadia. On March 31st, 1848, Katie, who was 11 at the time, and Maggie, who was 14 at the time, began communicating with a spirit at their home through a series of knocks. The girls would clap and ask the spirit to respond with a knock. They began asking the spirit questions and asking it to respond with knocks. So sort of a one knock for yes, two knocks for no type of communication. Word began to spread in the area about the girl's communication with the spirit, and they began to show their ability in other places to prove that they can communicate with spirits. By 1849, the girls, joined by their older sister Leah, began to travel doing demonstrations of their ability. And they began attracting large crowds, which they soon began to charge for admission to their spiritual shows. While at a show in Rochester, they gained the attention of P.T. Barnum, who booked the girls to hold a demonstration at a hotel in New York City. Their New York demonstrations continued to gain popularity when articles in the New York Tribune uh, began endorsing the Fox Sister Showcase of Spiritual Knocking, thus leading to a national tour. As the Fox sisters toured the country showcasing their abilities of spiritual knocking, spiritualism gained even more popularity. Andrew Jackson Davis even capitalized on the popularity of the Fox sisters to promote his writings. Now, I promise we are getting to Casadega. We are just continuing to build this foundation of what spiritualism is so we can have that context for uh, Casadega. <clears throat> um, the popularity of spiritualism rose throughout the mid to late 1800s, especially during the Civil War, as there were high numbers of death and people were trying to cope with the loss of so many loved ones. Uh, there was also a rise in the interest of spiritualism um, during World War I. Mary Todd Lincoln was famously interested in spiritualism, um, especially when her second youngest son, Willie, passed away in 1862. She frequently held seances in the White House, which President Abraham Lincoln reportedly attended a few. And this picture here is another um, example of spirit photography um, with Mary Todd Lincoln as the subject and the ghost of her late husband behind her with his hands on his shoulders. Um, I'm not sure if everyone can see very faintly 
the face of Abraham Lincoln in that. Um, also, the famous author of the Sherlock Holmes stories, Arthur Conan Doyle, also practiced spiritualism during the late 1880s. With, uh, he wrote a number of books on spiritualism, including the two volume, The History of Spiritualism in 1926. As more people learned about spiritualism and became interested in the idea of communicating with the dead, more people tried to capitalize on the spectacle of demonstrations. More flamboyant expressions of mediumship became popular, such as spirit photography, table tipping, moving objects without touching them, physical manifestation of spirits, using themselves as a vessel for spirits to speak or write through, levitation, etc. In fact, the Fox sisters were considered to be frauds at one point. On October 21st, 1888, Maggie Fox confessed to fabricating the knocking communication with spirits. She gave a public speech at the New York Academy of Music explaining the fraud and demonstrating how they created the knocking sounds by moving their joints and knuckles in a way that they would audibly pop and crack. She reportedly made the confession in exchange for $1,500 from a New York reporter, which in today's money would be like $45,000. In 1889, so a year later, Maggie recanted her confession after being pressured um, by some in the community and stated that she made the false confession for a number of reasons, such as pressure from her husband to denounce spiritualism to become a Catholic, being angry with her sister Leah, and simply needing the money. Even though she recanted her confession, the reputation of the Fox sisters was beyond repair. There was a rumor that the Fox house where all of this started um, had been haunted because a man was murdered and buried in the basement of the home. However, a search of the house was conducted in 1904 and bones were found behind a collapsed cellar door. Although it was reported um, from some sources that it was not a full skeleton and many of the bones were animal bones and they were likely placed there as a hoax. Even famed illusionist Harry Houdini spoke out against spiritualism in the 1920s. He was initially intrigued by spiritualism, but would fall victim to many scams and considered all mediums to be frauds who preyed on the grief of those who had recently lost a loved one. He frequently spoke out against mediums at the end of his life. And in 1926, months before he died, Houdini went before Congress to have um, fortune telling banned in Washington, D.C and he demonstrated how the spectacles of mediumship could be debunked. In the end, the ban did not pass, as many congressmen had an interest in spiritualism and stated that it fell under religious um, protection. However, uh, Houdini's demonstration against spiritualism and the congressional hearing caused people across the nation to second guess spiritualism and see it through a more skeptical lens. So, now that we have a solid understanding of spiritualism, how it began, how interest spread throughout the nation, as well as the skepticism that came with it, we can look at the founding of Casadega and its growth into what it is today. So this is George Colby. He was the founder of Casadega. He was born in Pike, New York in 1848 to Baptist parents. He was baptized at age 12 and claimed to have come out of the waters with healing and psychic powers. Shortly after the baptism, he claimed to have been visited by the spirit of his deceased uncle who told him he would one day establish a spiritualist camp in the South. Flash forward to 1875, Colby was working as a medium in Iowa when he went into a trance during a seance and received a message from a Native American spirit by the name of Seneca, who was one of Colby's spirit guides. Seneca called, told Colby to travel to Eau Claire, Wisconsin to meet another spiritualist named Theodore Giddings. So Colby made his way to Wisconsin and found Theodore Giddings when he got another message from Seneca. Seneca told him to travel with the Giddings family to Florida to secure land for a spiritualist camp. Shortly after, Colby and the Giddings family traveled to Jacksonville via railroad, then to Saint, the, through the St. John's River to Blue Springs in Volusia County. Following Seneca's guidance, Colby traveled through the wilderness and settled on land that would eventually become Casadega in 1875. 
1880, Colby filed a homestead claim for 75 acres, which was granted four years later. He built a home on the west side of what is now called Lake Colby, and the Giddings family settled about half a mile away from that. For unknown reasons, though, Colby did not continue the work to establish a, or the spiritualist camp after obtaining the homesteaded land. Some sources state that Colby continued to travel around the country working as a medium between 1875 and the 1890s. It wasn't until 1893 when the National Spiritual and Liberal Association met in De Leon Springs, which is about 15 miles from where Colby had settled, to hold a spiritualism convention. The group met with Colby and ultimately decided to establish a camp on the land that Colby had obtained. This camp would serve uh, as a place to meet and practice spiritualism in the winter months, so sort of like the original snowbirds. Thirteen prominent spiritualists from all over the, na the nation came to establish the camp, with a large number coming from Lilydale, New York. The Lilydale Spiritualist Camp was established in 1879 and is located to the east of Casadega Village. It was decided that Florida, uh, the Florida camp would be named after the village in New York. Also, to note, the land on which Lilydale in Casadega, New York, is located was land that belonged to the Seneca tribe, an Iroquoian people. Casadega, New York, was originally named by the Seneca people and means water beneath the rocks, and is des uh, which describes the natural springs in the area. In 1894, Colby signed a charter to form the Southern Casadega Spiritualist Camp Meeting Association, or SCSEMA for short. In early 1895, uh, Colby signed a warranty deed to the SCSEMA for 35 acres of land. And shortly thereafter, in February of 1895, the SCSEMA opened its first season with a three-day event at Colby's property, and 300 people attended and camped in tents on the property. Volusia County was ultimately receptive to the spiritualists settling in the area. A local newspaper at the time, the Volusia County Record, had previously denounced spiritualism as a threat to Christianity, but by early 1893, the newspaper instead defended the spiritualists and the Casadega residents um, when fears of fraudulent activity had been reported. Some sources claim that the newspaper supported the spiritualists in the hopes that the community would continue to settle in the area due to prospected financial gain it would bring to Volusia County. In fact, by 1909, the DeLand News newspaper further supported this claim, reporting that, quote, Lake Helen is reaping financial benefits from the camp, unquote. The paper also mentioned that the residents of the camp were highly respected and warm with open-handed hospitality. By 1900, Casadega had eight cottages, a library, and two lodging halls. One of the lodging halls is Harmony Hall, which was built in 1896. The other is Brigham Hall, which is here on the left, uh, which was built in 1897. Both halls still stand today with some uh, renovations where mediums live and work out of. In 1901, the Casadega Hotel was built, but in 1926, the hotel burned down due to suspected defective electrical wiring on the second floor of the three-story building. Between 1927 and 1928, the hotel was rebuilt and remains there today, which can be seen in the photo on the right. In 1901, an open-air building called the Auditorium was constructed to hold Sunday services. In 1923, the Auditorium was, um, or the, a church, rather, was built to replace the Auditorium. In 1975, it was renamed Colby Memorial Temple, and it remains there today. It also holds a seance room. In 1905, the pavilion was built and hosted events such as dances, plays, and parties. The building was renovated in 1974 to its current state, and in 1976, the building was renamed the Andrew Jackson Davis Building. It is a multi-purpose building which houses both a bookstore and a large room for events like classes, seminars, and wedding receptions. In the late 1920s, 
Colby left Casadega and moved to New Smyrna Beach. It is not clear why he left, although some sources state uh, he grew unhappy with how the camp was being run. In early 1933, Colby fell very ill and could not financially support himself. So the people of Casadega raised money and put together their efforts to bring him back to the camp to live out his last days. He died in June of the same year. Colby is buried in the nearby Lake Helen Cemetery. This photo is not his headstone, um, but it is a memorial to Colby that is on camp property. Throughout the 1920s and 1930s, more cottages were built, and by the end of the 1930s, over 40 people lived at the camp year-round, and hundreds and thousands of people have traveled from all over the world um, to visit the camp. <clears throat> Between the 1930s and 1940s, many extravagant mediums flocked to Casadega to put on flamboyant shows of spiritualism, many of which were exposed for being fraudulent. While those who were found to be frauds, left Casadega. Others uh, who had established credibility remained. In 1991, Casadega Spiritualist Camp was declared a U.S. Historic District on the National Register of Historic Places. The camp still hosts seminars, classes, and workshops on various spiritualist topics, such as mediumship development lectures, healing circles, and seances, as well as historical walking tours around the camp and a Find the Spirits tour, each of which can be attended for a fee. Mediums and healers can be certified with the SCSCMA, which can take between four to six years to complete. The camp has expanded from its original 35 acres to 57 acres and consists of 55 homes. The SCSCMA offers lifetime leases on land for, uh, on which houses sit, so individuals can may own a home, but the camp owns the land. Um, so individuals must be approved by the camp in order to live there. Okay. With that being said, not all who live in the area are spiritualists or members of the SCSEMA. There is an unsaid dividing line in which Casadega Road or County Road 4139 is a dividing line in the community. Everything on the north side of the road or the left side of this photo um, is not located on camp land and therefore not affiliated with the association, whereas everything on the south side or the right side of this photo um, is camp affiliated. At one point during the early 2000s, there was a sign at the entrance of the camp that warned tourists to only seek out readings from approved mediums on the right side or the south side of the street. In an oral history with Janie Owens, who lived in Casadega from 18, or 1980 to 2000, she explained that those who work on the north side of the street, those who are not associated with the camp, are more business-driven and less concerned with the religion of spiritualism as concerned by the SCSEMA. The SCSEMA requires that certified mediums of the association do not use tools to demonstrate mediumship such as tarot cards, handwriting analysis, palm reading, etc. This is because at the core of spiritualism, the mind is all that is used to access the spirit world and, co and communicate with the dead. In speaking with Marilyn Autry in a uh, oral history, um, who was a spiritualist who lived in Casadega from 1880, 1980, <laughs> 1980 to 1999, uh, and has spent most of her life dedicated to studying and practicing spiritualism. She states that she noticed a change in the community with the new generation. There is a shift in the interest from the public who want to see mediums use tools like tarot cards, which the SCSEMA does not allow. So, uh, oh, she also says that there are people and businesses that come to Casadega to profit from the misunderstanding of the camp. Some spiritualists in the camp, such as Reverend Lewis Gates, are more open to the idea of tools being used to assist in readings. Reverend Gates explains that while the SCSEMA does not allow tools to be used in assisted readings, uh, visitors want to see mediums and psychics use those tools. Gates states that sometimes the rules of the camp can be too strict and it turns visitors as well as some spiritualists away to the other side of the road. 
He says the strictness of the camp can sometimes turn people away because they cannot practice the way they want to. Gates hopes in the future the Casadega camp fosters more creativity for mediums that practice there and can become more open to the use of tools to show the science side of spiritualism. The only exception to this road separation is the hotel. In 1933, the hotel sold because the SC SCMA could not pay the taxes nor the debt owed to bondholders for rebuilding the structure after it had burned down. Um, and this was also during the Great Depression, so times were tough. Um, it remains the only privately owned property on Casadega Camp land, but the camp no longer owns the land on which the hotel sits. Um, it's also the only hotel in the area. Uh, after it was sold to a private entity in 1933, the association no longer had control over the property. The hotel has changed hands a number of times over the years, but the SC SEMA no longer associates with the hotel and does not endorse the mediums who work uh, out of the hotel for readings. Mediums who are not affiliated with the camp work out of the hotel, and there are also uh, there's also a store located inside the hotel where visitors can buy crystals and books. The hotel is also reportedly haunted, which the hotel um, kind of promotes, um, and a large this attracts a large number of tourists who seek out hauntings of the building. One thing the SCSCMA is adamant about is separating the camp from the urban legend of the devil's chair. The devil's chair is located in the cemetery north of the camp, which is not on camp property, but the cemetery is where George Colby and a number of founding uh, members of the camp are buried. The chair is a brick structure with a low brick fence and two gravestones in the front. The legend goes that the, le the devil speaks to you when you sit on the chair as people have reported hearing uh, disembodied voices. Others say the devil appears in front of you when you sit in the chair. Another story is that if you leave a can of beer on the chair, it will be empty by the morning. There was even <laughs> there was even a beer named after or that was named Devil's Chair by Red Cypress Brewing in Winter Springs, which I don't think is around anymore. That was named after this legend. Another story tells of a teenager being dared to sit in the chair at midnight on Halloween. His friends watched him walk through the cemetery towards the chair and then disappeared and was never seen again. But again, this is all just local legend. These stories cause for a lot of tourism in the area that the SC SCMA does not care for. No, not only does it cause um, misrepresentation of the community, but it also comes with vandalism from thrill-seeking tourists who have knocked over the headstones in the past and have also spray, spray painted the area. Additionally, the idea of a devil's chair is not unique to Casadega. There are a number of chairs and cemeteries across the United States that carry this legend. Many stone chairs or benches are placed in cemeteries at grave sites by families who own the plots. The chair is for the family in mourning to come and visit loved ones and reflect on those they've lost. Over the years, people have created this legend to lean into the spooky nature of cemeteries. In fact, there are three of the same chair structures in the cemetery. These are the other ones. Um, each of these plots belong to the Thatcher family, who I found no record of being part of the Casadega camp, and I believe instead they lived in the neighboring Lake Helen community. So in closing, the Casadega camp carries a fascinating history and is a unique part to Central Florida. The role that spiritualism plays in the community is commonly misunderstood, and therefore public perception paints the Casadega camp in a different light. Rather than a small community of witchcraft, hauntings, and the occult, Casadega is simply a religious community. Those who practice spiritualism in Casadega communicate with the dead, but not in any sinister sense. Instead, they find guidance through those who have passed and help people find solace from loved ones who have gone to the spirit side of life. Whether you are a believer or a skeptic, just know that Casadega Spiritualist Camp is a quiet religious community in Central Florida, and the idea that it is something spooky or sinister or dark is projected onto the community by public perception. I will now open it up to questions. Have a quick comment and uh -huh. one question. Uh, 
early in the lecture, you, meet, you mentioned Emanuel Swedenberg. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to say for the people who are interested in him, the Orlando Museum of Art does have a wonderful painting by him. If you, and it's part of their permanent exhibit, although they do rotate it, so you might have to ask about it. Uh, my question was, you mentioned a historical walking tour, mm -hmm. and I just wondered, uh, do you get on the website, or how do you find out more about the historical walking tours? You can, I believe, sign up for it. So if you, because this is not, this is like a feed to online, so if you can repeat the comments and questions as yes. best you can, that'll be helpful. Yes, sorry, the mic is connected to the feed online. So her comment was, um, when I discussed Emanuel Swedenborg um, earlier, he has a painting at, you said, at the Orlando Museum of Art that he made, um, which is part of their permanent exhibit, you said, which is fascinating. Um, and then her question was, sorry, repeat your question again for me. about the historical walking tours. Um, you can find out of all kinds of events um, that Casadega has on their website, which is casadega.org. Um, also, I was made aware that their uh, Gala Days is tomorrow, which is a little festival that they have. Um, so if you want to visit the community, um, they have Gala Days tomorrow. I think behind you. Since you're also talking about gala days, I just wanted to say that they also have a fantastic Italian restaurant that is connected to the hotel. Correct, which is called Sinatra's. Sinatra's, ho or Sinatra's restaurant in the hotel. Really good Italian food. <laughs> Any other questions? So is the community full right now? And what is the process to live in the camp? So I'm not sure if the community is the question. Oh, sorry. She asked if the community is full and what is the process to live in the camp. Um, I'm not sure if the community is full. I spoke with a number of um, previous and present community members recently. Um, I believe they're wanting more interest in the community, um, but they're not a type that goes out and seeks. They wait for people to kind of come to them for more information. Um, from what I found, um, you will kind of work under a certified medium that is already associated with the camp. Um, in order to live there, I believe, I could be wrong on this, um, you work under them, or work under a medium for a year. In order to be certified, it takes about four to six years to be certified with the camp. Camp, did you personally meet with a, a medium to have a, like a reading or anything yourself? Sorry, can, did you, uh, when you visited the camp, did you actually personally have any sort of a sitting or meeting with a medium? I didn't have a reading, but everyone that I sat with was a medium, but I did not have a personal reading. We're still on questions. We did get one online. Um, have there been any tensions um, between the town and Volusia County government or any controversies regarding that? Um, n not in the sense of between like spiritualism, like behind the idea of spiritualism, it's been more so over things like water, like there's a water tower there that the camp owned. And then um, at some point, I think in the 80s, that got turned over to Volusia County. Um, so there was some tensions over that kind of thing, but not over spiritualism in particular. Other questions while we're on them again? No, okay. Again, thank you very much for coming out. We really appreciate it. It's been a great turnout.